Imagine visiting your uncle, who has just woken up from a coma after 17 years, only to find him speaking gibberish. Meet Takafumi and his uncle Yosuke. Yosuke claims to have been in an alternate world called Grand Bamel for the last 17 years. Takafumi stares in disbelief, believing his uncle must be suffering from mental damage. Sensing his disbelief, his uncle tries to prove to him he went to another world by using magic. He chants in a strange language but nothing happens, much to Takafumi's dismay. Takafumi tries to tell him about his financial struggles and inability to support him, when suddenly his uncle triggers a wind spell while using Japanese and Takafumi realizes his uncle was telling the truth. Yosuke is a nerd and asks Takafumi about the console war situation and how Sega is doing. He becomes distraught when he learns that Sega no longer makes consoles. He immediately writes in his notebook and chants a spell, Akira's Korra. Takafumi asks what Akira's Korra is, and his uncle reveals to him that it's the memory erasure spell, which he uses whenever he experiences something unbearable. However, he writes it down in his notebook before erasing it. Takafumi asks to read the notebook, which he immediately regrets, causing him to break down in tears and ask his uncle to use Akira's Korra on him. A week later, Yosuke gets discharged and moves in with Takafumi. Meanwhile, Takafumi decided to monetize his uncle's powers and started posting videos of it on YouTube, which helped to generate some ad revenue. Later, Yosuke asks Takafumi why he has such a big apartment living alone, to which he replies that he was initially a roomshare setup, but it didn't work out. His uncle is surprised to hear the term roomshare, which he has never heard of but is happy to hear Takafumi found friends to live with. Takafumi asks his uncle about his companions in the other world, to which he informs him, he was mostly solo for 17 years. The reason was that everyone in the other world was beautiful, while he was seen as a monster and got hunted down wherever he went. His uncle talks about one particular person who followed him around regularly and harassed him. He saved her life, but rather than saying thanks, she was rude to him. As his uncle continues to talk more about the person, Takafumi realizes that the girl actually liked his uncle but was at Sundare, a concept that didn't exist 17 years ago. His uncle shifts his attention to the comments on his YouTube video, with one commenting on how fake it looked. Yosuke struggles using the internet and dealing with haters for the first time. One day, Yosuke shows interest in buying a turn model cell phone from an auction. Takafumi says it won't work since it uses a 2G signal. His uncle wants to get it anyway, while he is surprised by the innovation of smartphones, he laments about their lack of gimmick. Yosuke mentions how he once innovated an item in the other world and showed his memory using a spell. He had crafted an everlasting pot of water using spell cards for a village suffering from a drought. Takafumi is impressed and thinks the villagers must have sung him praises. But in reality, the villagers had tried to hang him because it was sacrilegious, and they smashed it. While the villagers were trying to hang him, an elf arrives to stop them. While the elf tried to mediate the situation, Yosuke took the chance to escape. Yosuke is able to change the point of view in his memory, showing how he was treated. Takafumi is shocked at how cute the elf is. Suddenly Yosuke gets a notification of the auction on the cell phone closing down soon and orders it in a panic, without checking the shipping cost, which turns out to be 2,000 yen for the item, since someone from an isolated island was selling it. Takafumi laments that if the location was closer, they could have picked it up and saved on the shipping cost. Yosuke suddenly jumps out of the window, to Takafumi's surprise, and flies away, returning from his trip 30 minutes later with the cell phone in hand. He shows it off to Takafumi, who asks him if he could pick up other items to save on shipping costs, which he agrees to. Takafumi receives a package and asks his uncle for something to open the box with. His uncle gives him a short sword which surprises him, and he asks his uncle where it came from. His uncle shows him his storage magic as he pulls his notebook from it. Takafumi asks if his uncle had brought more stuff from the other world. He takes out some rings, which he says are rare enough to trade for a castle. Takafumi gets excited but his uncle informs him that he had already tried selling it at the pawn shop and it was priced at 50 yen because the materials were so rare, they thought it was just a toy. Takafumi asks whether his uncle wanted to give the ring to someone, to which uncle informs him that it was a trophy for clearing a dungeon. Seeing Takafumi down, Yosuke asks if he wants to talk about love and shares the story of his first love, Sonic and Tails. 
Yosuke reminisces about visiting the toy store and watching the title screen. Takafumi asks if he ever met any girls in the other world, to which his uncle shows him his memory of saving a girl and her siblings from an orc. While initially thankful, the girl eventually despairs upon seeing his face and decides to sacrifice herself by giving herself up to save her siblings. Having misinterpreted the situation, Uncle thought that the girl was happy and thankful to him, but he suddenly blacks out and thinks that some goblins attacked him from behind and threw him into the river. Takafumi notices in the memory that the girl's siblings were making suspicious moves while trying to get behind his uncle and they were the ones who attacked him. But thanks to the elf, his uncle was saved. The elf proclaims that he is in her debt, so to repay her, he gives her an extremely rare ring. The elf panics and blushes as he puts the ring on her finger but ultimately accepts it. Takafumi is shocked and realizes the elf thought he was proposing to her. But in the end Yosuke sold the ring to pay off his perceived debt and abandoned the elf in a random town, leading to her following him everywhere for 17 years. Yosuke tells Takafumi to put his sword away, which ends up as inspiration for his next viral YouTube video, getting over 2 million views. A week later, on a rainy day, Yosuke receives a package. It's the final Sega magazine which he never had the chance to read. Takafumi has no interest, but as his uncle reads the magazine, he finds that the most popular game was a dating sim, while his favorite game Guardian Heroes came in ranked 197th. Yosuke hovers outside in the pouring rain and gets struck by lightning, proclaiming that Guardian Heroes should have won. Once the rain settles, Takafumi tries to console his uncle, telling him that at least an RPG placed second. He then learns that his uncle didn't play RPGs due to his lousy memory surrounding remembering objectives. The mentioning of RPGs jogs Yosuke's memory of a time that reminded him of an RPG encounter he had. He is told about a dragon that threatens to destroy the village and the way to defeat the dragon is with a special ice sword from the Ice Clan. However the sword is sealed by a girl named Mabel, and he must cure her broken heart to get the sword. Upon meeting with Mabel, she tells him about a particular flower that her mother once showed her. Yosuke immediately leaves and goes straight to the dragon, slaying it himself without needing the sword. Takafumi notes how he should have retrieved the flowers for Mabel, but his uncle claims it was too hard for him to remember. The village elder is shocked to hear he defeated the dragon without the sword and Mabel is left to her misery. The doorbell rings, and it's a package delivery containing a Sega Saturn and 20 games. He gives it to his uncle as a gift and his uncle is shocked. Yosuke is overjoyed, and the two play games together. On New Year's Eve, Takafumi becomes curious about what New Year's was like in the other world. His uncle shows him his memory of a New Year's Eve party that he attended. Everyone was happy and having a wonderful time except for his uncle who ate alone and returned to his room for the night. Takafumi is disappointed at the memory and they go play on the Sega Saturn instead. During their game session, Yosuke reveals that Mabel did visit him that night, and Takafumi turns off the game and demands that he see what happened during her visit. Once again, Yosuke shows his memory and Mabel asks how she could overcome being a coward and be strong like him. Yosuke gives her a motivational speech, but it takes a drastic turn when he learns that she's a recluse and suggests it's okay to stay that way, and okay to be a coward. Mabel offers him the ice sword, but he declines it because it's too cold and the memory ends. The pair spend the rest of their New Year's Eve eating noodles and discussing games. The next day we meet a woman named Fujimiya. She is creeped out when she sees Yosuke on a bench, talking to himself. As she walks away, she runs into Takafumi. They haven't seen each other since childhood and they briefly chat. Takafumi invites her over to visit his place, which Fujimiya agrees to but tells him she'll come over after dropping off her groceries. 30 minutes later, Fujimiya arrives and receives a text from Takafumi about how he's out getting snacks, but will be home soon. Fujimiya enters the place, and shortly after, Yosuke arrives, landing on the balcony. Yosuke notices her and charges at her, pinning her down and attempts to erase her memory of what she saw, but Takafumi returns just in time and stops him, explaining that she's his friend. Upon hearing this, Yosuke offers his apology and thanks Fujimiya for being Takafumi's friend. Afterward, Takafumi tries to explain how his uncle can use magic and is a YouTuber. However, Fujimiya believes Yosuke is crazy and is taking advantage of Takafumi's kindness, proclaiming that Yosuke should leave Takafumi's life and live his own. Yosuke deduces that she likes Takafumi. 
Despite her denying it and Takafumi claiming they're just friends, Yosuke doesn't buy it. Yosuke dashes behind Fujimiya and reads her mind. He finds out she changed her outfit and even showered before coming, causing her to be embarrassed. The doorbell rings and Yosuke goes to answer it. Fujimiya suggests that Takafumi cut ties with his uncle, even offering to help him with rent, which he mistakes as her wanting to be roommates. One day as Takafumi returns home, he finds a confused-looking Fujimiya with the elf from the other world. 75 minutes earlier, Takafumi tells his uncle that Fujimiya will be coming over. He then reads his uncle's email, which his uncle ignored because it was in English and he couldn't read it. Takafumi tells him it's a message from YouTube and warns his uncle he will soon be jobless. YouTube changed the requirement to earn money, to having 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. His uncle's channel has enough watch time but only 812 subscribers. Takafumi sees that his uncle's low subscriber count is due to his uncle's rude replies in the comments, insisting that his magic is real. Being in such a stressful predicament, reminds Yosuke about a time in the other world when the defensive barrier of the sealed city broke and a thousand monsters invaded. After hearing this, Takafumi is dying to know what happened. Yosuke shows his memory, he sees an enormous barrier surrounding the entire city. The residents become alarmed, thinking he is an orc but the elf is there and says he only looks like an orc, reasoning if he was really an orc, the barrier would have killed him. The elf goes on to explain that the barrier is to ward off mythical beasts in the surrounding area. Yosuke summons his two energy swords, which shoot a beam of energy, destroying the barrier. The residents panic as Takafumi is left speechless. He questions why his uncle would do such a thing, only to learn his uncle just wanted to see if he could. With the barrier destroyed, an army of giant cyclops led by a cloud dragon appear outside the city, preparing to invade. The two assess their dire situation and the elf takes out her legendary sword and prepares to fight. Using her magic, she dashes through the sky, toward the cyclops. But the barrier reforms and she crashes into it. It turns out that Yosuke just asked the spirits to repair the broken barrier and they did. The monsters leave, but the residents are suspicious of Yosuke. However, the elf defuses the situation and in return for not telling everyone it was him that broke the barrier, she asks Yosuke to take her on a date. Takafumi is overjoyed at the result but Yosuke ends up skipping town. Takafumi is horrified. His uncle fled to avoid being blackmailed by her. Remembering how he asked the spirits for help, Yosuke decides to ask people to subscribe to his YouTube channel. Takafumi thinks it's a bad idea, thinking that the internet trolls will prey on his weakness. However, the opposite occurs, and more people subscribe to the channel, enough for Yosuke to save his channel. Fujimiya arrives and wonders what is going on between the two of them. Afterward, Fujimiya lectures Yosuke about being a burden on Takafumi and how being a YouTuber isn't financially adequate. Yosuke brushes it off, and Fujimiya mentions that Takafumi isn't able to have a girlfriend live with him due to him living there. Hearing this, Yosuke suggests that Fujimiya live with them, but Takafumi refuses that suggestion. He gets a message about a sale, and heads out to the shops. Once Takafumi is gone, Yosuke tries to have a heart-to-heart -heart with Fujimiya about her relationship with Takafumi but she refuses. Yosuke talks about the romances he's experienced in video games but Fujimiya rejects the comparison. Yosuke leaves the room and Fujimiya feels bad and goes to apologize to him, only to find the elf in Yosuke's clothes. She introduces herself as Takafumi's aunt. She then tries to continue her heart-to-heart -heart with Fujimiya until Takafumi returns home. Takafumi is surprised at the elf claiming to be his aunt. He figures out that she is his uncle and asks why he didn't change his appearance in the other world. Yosuke tells him it is a forbidden magic as you could lose your own identity. Takafumi comes up with an idea and suggests they shoot a YouTube video about his uncle's transformation magic. Although his uncle refuses at first, Takafumi convinces him after promising to play Guardian Heroes with him and Fujimiya is left confused. As the video is uploaded to the internet, they decide to watch a memory of Takafumi's past. Fujimiya is shocked at the magic but Takafumi convinces her it's just a hologram projector. It's a memory of how Fujimiya used to bully him. Fujimiya is horrified to remember she was a bully instead of the sweet memory she had. She tries to stop them from watching but in the end they turn out to become friends. The video finishes uploading and they watch it. Takafumi pretends his uncle is a VTuber. Yosuke is horrified that the video contains no footage of the game. 
However, it's an instant success, getting over 200,000 views. All the comments compliment how cute he looks. Takafumi celebrates as Yosuke gets depressed and reverts back into his true form, and Fujimiya is shocked at the sight. Despite Yosuke's pride getting destroyed, they get to enjoy a nice sushi dinner from the money he made. Watching another one of Takafumi's memories, he gets bullied by two boys, but they end up getting bullied by Fujimiya which leads to Takafumi admiring her. However, Fujimiya gets depressed seeing this. Fujimiya admits she was a brat but shows how she became more feminine in middle school. Fujimiya notices her coffee tasting especially nice, and Takafumi tells her he bought a coffee grinder and beans with the money his uncle gave him for his birthday. Thinking about giving Takafumi a gift, Fujimiya sends him a photo of herself in a swimsuit from middle school, hoping to entice him. However, Takafumi immediately tries to delete it, not wanting a picture of an underaged girl on his phone, and Fujimiya is devastated. Takafumi gets an alert for a sale on coffee beans and heads out to buy them. Fujimiya has an outburst from the rejection and causes Yosuke to spill his coffee. He reflexively casts ice magic, freezing the coffee but also Fujimiya. Yosuke thaws her out and Fujimiya is left drenched. Yosuke tells her to take her shower and he steps out and leaves some of Takafumi's clothes for her to wear as hers dry off. After Fujimiya is done with her shower, she puts on Takafumi's top, but then Takafumi walks in on her. A stare-off between the two occurs, and Fujimiya then shrieks in embarrassment, causing Takafumi to quickly leave while apologizing. However, Fujimiya hopes that Takafumi is enticed after seeing her like that, but he is so dense he apologizes and tells her he will take responsibility, which confuses Fujimiya. Takafumi calls Yosuke home and tells him to erase his memory. Fujimiya stops him, saying that she didn't mind and to her dismay, Takafumi thanks her for being such a considerate and thoughtful friend. A week later, Fujimiya reveals it's her 20th birthday. Yosuke shares his life philosophy, telling her you should never give up because things can change in an instant. Fujimiya is impressed by his wise words and Yosuke shows them his memory of his 20th birthday. He is approached by the elf and she joins him. She confronts him about the barrier he broke and, as a bribe, offers her some food to keep her mouth shut about the barrier. The elf then changes the subject concerning how strong he is, remembering how he once saved her from a deadly venom dragon, but he brushes it off as hard work and training. The elf asks if this is how he seduces women and Yosuke also mentions how he killed the blaze dragon. The elf is shocked, especially after learning he killed it without the ice sword. She doesn't believe him but he shows proof showing her the fire of the blaze dragon. Yosuke explains how his achievements are possible, because he never gives up, as he repeats his life philosophy. He reveals to the elf that he had learned it from a game strategy guide. Takafumi and Fujimiya are speechless at the revelation, and Yosuke then goes to play some games. The memory continues. Yosuke invites the elf back to his inn. The elf is reluctant but he grabs her arm, shocking Takafumi and Fujimiya. The elf ends up going along with him, and as the two continue their way back to the inn, Yosuke thanks the elf for supporting him through the tough times. She is shocked to learn how much she means to him. They make it back to the inn and the elf tells him she would support him forever. However, he tells her it's not necessary and just thanks her for supporting him back to his room. He locks her out and immediately goes to sleep. The next morning, the elf confronts him and demands to know his plans for the day. Takafumi is amazed at her resilience but Fujimiya notices her eyes and realizes she spent the night crying. After seeing this, Fujimiya can't help but take a drink and forces Yosuke to drink as well. Yosuke stumbles and becomes drunk instantly, and Fujimiya tries to bail but Takafumi stops her. Yosuke decides to take her home. He uses a wind spell, causing a huge gust of wind, and the three of them end up high in the sky. Fujimiya suggests that Yosuke become a pro baseball player to make money. She says that he could use his magic to pitch ultra-fast balls. However, Yosuke claims that in his youth, he was looked down upon by the baseball team in his class, but he still respected them as they earnestly practiced daily, so for him, to cheat using magic would be against his morals. Yosuke goes on to talk about how dangerous the terms in baseball sound, like dead ball and stealing bases. It reminds him of a time he was almost assassinated. He then shows the memory in question, where he tirelessly wanders through a forest after completing a dungeon. A person is shown close behind him and is revealed to be Mabel from the Ice Clan. 
She freezes Yosuke's legs in place and tackles him to the ground. Recognizing Mabel, Yosuke asks why she's there. Mabel sarcastically answers that she was relieved of her duties because he killed the dragon without using the ice sword. Not understanding that she was being sarcastic, Yosuke says he is happy for her. Although Yosuke was at her mercy, Mabel asks why he didn't defend himself. Yosuke says that he knows she has no intention of killing him. He then asks her if she's been eating properly, causing Mabel to whimper and cry and pass out onto Yosuke's lap. He then drags Mabel to his room at an inn and places her on his bed. After Mabel wakes up, Yosuke gives her a loaf of bread and asks why she didn't become a hermit in her village. Mabel says that since she was no longer needed, her tree home was cut down for firewood and that she was given an ultimatum of either becoming the village pet or leaving. So she ended up freezing all of the villagers' feet, dripped icy cold water on the necks, and then fled. Shocked by Mabel's tenacity, Yosuke asks Mabel if she really doesn't like working, to which she mentions a few possible work interests of hers, but notes that they're all too labor-demanding. Yosuke relates to her predicament, but notes that he makes his living as an adventurer. He suggests that she could also make a living as an adventurer using the ice sword. Despite her hesitance in doing so, Yosuke convinces Mabel, claiming she should live her life the way she chooses. Elated by the suggestion, Mabel claims she'd still need to break the seal on the sword, which is linked to her heart, but believes that becoming an adventurer would fix her gloomy personality. However, Yosuke claims there's nothing wrong with being an introvert. The ice sword starts to crack and Yosuke continues to compliment her, causing her to blush and the sword to crack even further. Yosuke then points out the ring he gave Mabel when she was asleep, saying that it is enough to provide for the rest of her life. Mabel misunderstands his intentions and her sword completely melts. She tries to turn him down but Yosuke insists. She becomes flustered and Yosuke suggests it's getting late and she should stay the night. Mabel asks to first have a bath but Yosuke sniffs her and says that she doesn't smell bad. He mentions once she sells the ring, she will be able to afford the bath fee. Yosuke clarifies, once she sells the ring, she will never have to worry about money again. Realizing the misunderstanding, her sword is immediately frozen once again and she tries to attack Yosuke. The elf comes to see what the commotion is, only to find Mabel restrained and Yosuke holding her down. Seeing this, the elf releases Mabel from her bindings, and she then freezes Yosuke in place, and bonds with the elf. The elf says how traumatizing it must be to wake up married to an orc, but Mabel seems to not mind. She goes on to reveal that the people of the Ice Clan share blood with those from another world. She explains the history of the Ice Clan's founding when a samurai from an alternate world was sent there 400 years ago. The samurai asked the god who reincarnated him to give him a sword capable of slaying a god. However, the elf interrupts because she already knows the story, having read it from a book. Mabel is devastated the elf ruined her story and begins to cry. Telling the story was one of the few things Mabel knew how to do, and she breaks down after it was ruined. The elf apologizes and tries to console her. Yosuke is outraged that he never got a special bonus like a god-slaying sword. Takafumi suggests they look back to the moment when he first was transported to the other world. Yosuke rewinds through his memories and finds the moment he was resurrected. He runs into some men who beat him, thinking he is an orc. Fujimiya hears a voice interpreted as God, and Takafumi uses his translation app to translate what God was saying. It says that it would grant him an ability of his choice, and Yosuke, at that time, wanted to be able to understand and communicate with the people of that world, thinking that if he could communicate, they wouldn't treat him like a monster. However, he is instead captured and sold to a freak show as a rare talking orc. He was sold for three bronze coins, which turns out to be nothing, as some other trash they had, sells for 120 bronze. This revelation shocks both Takafumi and Fujimiya about how dirt cheap he was. Watching this memory, Yosuke and Takafumi both get nosebleeds. It's then revealed that Yosuke had wiped his memory of this event and Takafumi had his memory erased after reading about it in his uncle's diary. The memory continues and Yosuke is locked away in a prison with other animals. They skip ahead about a week because the slave trader forgot about him. Takafumi and Fujimiya think he's gone mad, talking to himself. But actually Yosuke talked to the ray of moonlight that shone through a crack in the ceiling about the Sega game called Pulse Man. It turns out that the ray of light was actually Killide, the spirit of light. It teaches Yosuke and grants him his first spell, the Sword of Light. 
He uses the sword to escape the prison and Fujimiya realizes that it was Yosuke's language translation ability that allowed him to communicate with the spirits. This revelation is also a surprise to Yosuke, who thought his magic ability had come from his ability to adapt thanks to playing video games. In the memory, he goes on to free the other captive monsters and then escape. One of the rabbits follows him and Takafumi wonders if he kept it as a pet, but it turns out to be feral and attacks him. All the monsters turn feral and attack both him and the slave trader. Not wanting to live as an ordinary commoner, Yosuke fights back with his newly acquired light magic and saves the slave trader and himself. Although the slave trader is initially thankful, he becomes terrified by the bloody and crazed looking Yosuke, who then used his magic to transfer him to a safe location. Throughout the night, Yosuke continued to kill all the monsters and in the morning he cooked them up and ate them. Yosuke notes how this was a good start to his journey in the other world, shocking both Fujimiya and Takafumi. It starts getting late and Fujimiya decides she should get home for dinner. Yosuke agrees they should have a break, mentioning how things just got worse after that, revealing the time when he saved the elf from a dragon. Not wanting to miss the story, Fujimiya tells her family to have dinner without her. Yosuke shows his memory of saving the elf from a venom dragon. He is able to kill it with a single blow, and Fujimiya becomes saddened that she skipped dinner only to see this. Yosuke explains that he merely attacked the spot that the elf had already weakened. As the memory continues, Yosuke gives the elf his hoodie but she pulls a knife out thinking he is an orc. However, she comes to her senses and puts the knife away, but this leads to a misunderstanding, with Yosuke thinking she stabbed herself. He pulls up the hoodie to inspect her stomach. She calls him a pervert and berates him, marking the start of their troubled relationship. Takafumi and Fujimiya are left speechless and Yosuke mentions how the elf was always troubling him after that, like when he was frozen. Speaking of which, Fujimiya asks what happened after he was frozen. Yosuke shows his memory as he lies in bed, suffering from the aftermath of being frozen. It's revealed that both the elf and Mabel stayed in bed with him during the night. Yosuke and the elf have a moment together, but it's ruined by Mabel, who cries for her mother in her sleep, but it's just about not wanting to work and the elf wakes her up with a karate chop. A flustered Mabel tries to explain her sleep talk concerning not wanting to work. Yosuke reminds her that she can sell the ring he gave her, but Mabel is hesitant to do it, saying that she is inexperienced with bartering. The elf enthusiastically offers to help her sell it, but Mabel decides to hold onto it. Yosuke suggests that the elf can take care of Mabel, and Mabel believes it would mean becoming the elf's pet. Afterward, they all eat breakfast together, and Mabel formally introduces herself to the elf and Yosuke. The elf doesn't share her name and simply refers to herself as elf and reveals her mission to collect ancient relics. Yosuke introduces himself as Wolfkinblood, shocking Takafumi and Fujimiya with his fake name. He tells them that he is from another country trying to make his way back to his home. Takafumi asks his uncle why he gave them a fake name, and his uncle tells him he didn't want to give his name out to strangers. After that, the elf announced that she'd be heading back to Ikoza, the town she sold her ring at. Yosuke asks her why, but it's clear to Takafumi and Fujimiya that she wants to buy her ring back, feeling threatened by Mabel. Mabel then asks what Yosuke will be doing, and he claims he'll try and checking out a nearby dungeon that a hero was trying to clear. Mabel offers to help him, however, she needs to take a nap first and Yosuke heads off on his own. Yosuke notices how late it's getting and calls it for the day. A starving Fujimiya wishes she had gone home for dinner, so Yosuke treats her and Takafumi to some ramen. In another memory, we see the elf as she wakes up. She tries to grab her necklace with her feet. Yosuke suddenly walks in on her. He asks for his hoodie back, but she refuses, saying that it belongs to her now. Yosuke is determined to get it back, using his magic to restrain her. He starts taking it off her, but struggles because the magic is getting in the way. The elf suggests he can undo the spell to make it easier on himself, and he foolishly agrees. But after he undoes the spell, the elf attacks him. Yosuke is completely knocked out, and the elf feels bad. She quickly patches him up, and leaves him in the room. Yosuke mentions how messed up this was, and Takafumi can only agree, but he thinks that his uncle should have just let her have the hoodie. Yosuke says that the elf always took his stuff and never returned anything, and the only thing he ever got was her dress, which they end up getting Fujimiya to try on. Seeing her in the dress, Yosuke finds himself actually missing the elf. Afterward, 
Yosuke announces that the official name of his language translation skill would be Wild Talker, a name that Takafumi suggested. Fujimiya suddenly notices the time and has to leave, saying she has some college work to do. Takafumi watches his uncle play Golden Axe, and his uncle shows him how he can get the enemy to walk to their own death. He says that his gaming saved the day in the other world, and he brings up his memory of when he worked with some other adventurers. The adventurers are shown attacking him, and he skips ahead to after overpowering them, and explains he is not a goblin. The group's healer, Alicia, then recognizes Yosuke as the person everyone else mistook for an orc during the winter festival. Her companions are introduced, as Raiga and Edgar. Despite their hesitation, Alicia asks Yosuke to help them protect a village from a goblin invasion, and he immediately agrees to help. A horde of goblin approaches, but Yosuke tells the others he has a plan. He taunts the goblins, and they rush at him, and start beating him up. Takafumi is not impressed, and Yosuke says his plan to lure them into a pit didn't work for some reason. He then goes to use the jump attack he learned from his game. He attempts to move against the goblins, but he misses every time. In the end he destroys a mountain, which crushes all the goblins, and he thanks his game for giving him the moves to defeat the goblins. Takafumi points out that the moves from the game didn't help at all. Yosuke is on copium and insists they saved him. After that, the group heads back to the town for their reward. Yosuke finally seems to have made friends, but along the way, Alicia mentions how she saw him rebuild the barrier in the sealed city. Hearing this, Yosuke erases her memory, along with Edgar and Raiga's memories. Despite this, Yosuke would go on to meet them again, and after fighting them once again, clearing up the misunderstanding that he's not an orc, they tell him that they are after a giant hedgehog that has been attacking a nearby village. Hearing this, he imagines Sonic and proclaims that they should try to communicate with the monster and try to find a peaceful solution. The hedgehog appears, and he becomes disappointed, seeing that it looks nothing like Sonic. He talks with it using his ability, he tries to reason with it, but finds that it just enjoys killing humans for fun, and Yosuke completely incinerates it, leaving nothing but ash. Suddenly a phone rings, and Takafumi sees that Fujimiya left her phone. Takafumi convinces his uncle to help him return the phone, and they fly to her location. When they get there, they see that she is with a shady-looking man. Yosuke lends his powers to Takafumi just in case, and he approaches her, and returns her phone. The man becomes apprehensive, but Takafumi realizes he is actually Chiaki, Fujimiya's younger brother, and he is overjoyed to see him after so many years. Yosuke joins them, and Fujimiya introduces him to her brother as a YouTuber, but Chiaki has no clue who he is. As Yosuke explains what he does on YouTube, Takafumi reveals to Fujimiya how he was prepared to protect her. Fujimiya asks what he would have done if Chiaki was a shady guy, and Takafumi reveals the powers he borrowed from his uncle. He turns them both invisible, leaving doubles of them behind, and flying up to a higher location. Fujimiya is surprised he can use the magic so well. They head into an empty classroom, and Fujimiya says that this was just like in school, when he stepped in when she was getting ganged up on. Takafumi can't quite remember, so he plays the memory in question. But it turns out that Fujimiya was actually the one that was picking on the group of kids, and Takafumi misread the situation, and thought she was getting ganged up on. Despite this, Fujimiya was still flattered by Takafumi's good intentions. A girl suddenly walks in on them shocked. She is Fujimiya's friend, Sawa and Takafumi introduces himself to her. They get along well, and Fujimiya gets a bit jealous of them. They get back to Takafumi's home, and Yosuke continues on with his memory. He asks the trio if they have heard about the hero that's around. Alicia borrows Edgar's sword and reveals that she is the hero, known as the Shining Crusader. She damages the sword, and immediately bows down, apologizing to Edgar. Fujimiya is shocked to see that this is the legendary hero party. When Yosuke looks at Alicia's memory, he sees that they took credit for stopping the goblin invasion, although they have no memory of it. Alicia once again asks him if he was the one who repaired the barrier in the sealed city, causing him to be on alert, but she retracts it, claiming she understands his desire to keep a low profile and promises to keep his secret. Yosuke and the hero party travel together and reach the Labyrinth of Darkness and a ranked dungeon. Upon entering the dungeon, Yosuke immediately casts a spell that reveals a secret shortcut. At the end of the passage, they find the dungeon's treasure, the Wand of Salvation, but the party is completely underwhelmed with how easy they got it. Yosuke realizes what he did, and he wipes their memories. 
he drags them back outside, make them go through the dungeon properly, and actually earn the wand. Takafumi is glad that things turned out well, but Yosuke wants to erase their memories again, make them forget that he helped them, but Alicia is overjoyed, saying this is a memory she will never forget, and Yosuke decides not to wipe their memories. Before leaving for the capital, Yosuke receives three healing charms from Alicia as thanks for his help conquering the dungeon. When the memory ends, Takafumi and Fujimiya praise Yosuke for handling the situation with a calm and cool head. But Yosuke says he learned to keep cool thanks to his video games. Takafumi wonders what happened after his uncle went to the capital, so his uncle continues the memory. We see him confronting a group of soldiers, and he uses his magic to read the commander's mind. He learns who was behind making Alicia a hero. He vanishes and heads toward the capital. We see a meeting between the commander and Chief Ricardo and a high priest. We learn that the hero party was meant to be a martyr, create a crisis, and boost their military funding. Yosuke appears, reading Ricardo's mind. The commander defends his actions, claiming that the hero party knew what they signed up to become adventurers. But because of his timid attitude, Yosuke couldn't argue against Ricardo's logic and gets surrounded by soldiers. In this predicament, Yosuke transforms into the greatest monster he could think of, turning into his middle school homeroom teacher. He tells Takafumi that his teacher was the best debater he ever knew. But in this form, he just ends up slapping Ricardo into submission. He slaps him repeatedly. When Ricardo's aide tries to defend him, he slaps her as well, and they both concede to him. Ricardo explains that the world has been unstable, with strange things happening occurring, the blaze dragon being slain, the sealed city barrier being broken. Realizing he was the one behind these events, he couldn't bring himself to continue slapping them. There is a sudden blast of energy, and Mabel appears. Yosuke returns to his original form, and her power instantly melts. An epic battle between the two occurs, but in reality, it's an illusion created by ice magic, and they are really just watching from the sidelines. Yosuke asks what she is doing here, and Mabel reveals that she became a knight of the kingdom. She has grown an ego after getting a job, she tells him he should join her. She tells him to throw the fight, so she can get a pay raise, and make him her underling, but Yosuke can't accept losing to her. The soldiers see them for real, after their illusion became too ridiculous, the commander suggests that Mabel is in cahoots with Yosuke. Mabel starts fighting him for real, even wounding some soldiers, as Yosuke dodges her attacks. Yosuke unleashes his energy sword, and using his speed, he shatters her ice. Mabel comes to her senses, and it turns out she was being mind-controlled by the high priest. Yosuke condemns Ricardo for working with a man that uses such tactics. Ricardo worries how they will be able to protect the kingdom, but Yosuke vows to protect them from any crisis that arises, transforming into the blaze dragon to show his strength, and he flies away. Takafumi and Fujimiya are amazed at how cool he was, but he reminds them it was all thanks to his games. Sometime after that, Mabel is devastated, as she loses her position as a knight of the kingdom. With the memory over, Takafumi has somehow grown scales all over his body. He thinks back to when he borrowed his uncle's power, and says he used the spells with shortened incantations. His uncle tells him that the shortened incantations are like being rude and demanding to the spirits, so this is a punishment for that. Fujimiya panics seeing Takafumi transforming, but Yosuke tells her not to worry, and ends up transforming himself as well, so Takafumi isn't alone. They both turn into dinosaurs, and Fujimiya is left stunned. There is a major heat wave across Japan, and Takafumi and Yosuke are feeling its effects. When Yosuke tries to play on his Sega Saturn, it fails to boot, and he starts having a meltdown. Fujimiya comes over, and wonders why Yosuke doesn't just use some magic to cool the place down. Yosuke immediately casts his ice magic, blasting the room with an icy breeze, and they thank her for coming up with such a genius idea. Fujimiya wonders what the spirits actually look like, and Takafumi imagines a pair of beautiful fairies. But Yosuke explains that the spirits don't actually have physical forms, but are more like a collection of wills, and he is only able to hear their voices. Yosuke suddenly hears a spirit, and then says that they need to get a cow's head. Takafumi looks it up on his phone, but it would cost 5 million yen. Yosuke explains that the ice spirit he summoned to cool down the room is asking for the head as compensation for its work. It wants them to make an altar and offer the cow's head, or else it will freeze their fields for 10 years. However, it changes its mind, and accepts a fish head as a compromise. An altar is set up, but Yosuke starts craving the fish head. 
blaming the craving on when they transformed into dinosaurs, and we see how they terrorized Fujimiya. Yosuke warns that it can be dangerous to be transformed for too long, as he pulls up his memory of when he was transformed as the Blaze Dragon. He became trapped in the dragon's thought pattern for a month, and unable to transform back, but eventually the elf found him after following a rumor about his location, and fights him, they have an epic battle, but ultimately, the elf managed to overpower him, and mentally connects with his mind, and helps him revert back to his human form. Afterward, a noble accompanied by an army of soldiers who wanted to deal with the dragon arrives. The elf recognizes him as the head of the Regfulgen family, to whom she owes money. It's also revealed that the elf is a princess, shocking both Takafumi and Fujimiya. The memory continues as Regfulgen demands Yosuke and provokes the elf, prompting her to draw her weapon, but is stopped because of a magical pact that they made. Rigfaljin calls the elf foolish for using herself as collateral, but Yosuke wakes up and just destroys the magical restraint. Believing he's repaid the debt to her, he tries to leave, but is held back by the elf. With the pact gone, a giant warrior steps up for Rigfaljin, ready to teach the elf a lesson, but before they can fight, Yosuke gives Rigfaljin a ring to help pay off the elf's debt. Seeing him give away another ring makes the elf enraged, causing her to shake the ground as she powers up. The ground starts to crumble, and Yosuke grabs onto the elf as the ground below them falls, revealing a swamp. Rigfaljin is distraught over the ring stuck on his finger, and just orders his men to retreat. We learn that the reason the elf fell into debt, was so she could buy back the ring he had given to her. Seeing they are covered in mud, they head to a nearby hot spring to get cleaned up. Later that day, we see Fujimiya's friend Sawa, arrive at the apartment complex, and she is approached by Chiaki. She is creeped out by him, and when Takafumi comes down the stairs, his nonchalant attitude makes Sawa even more nervous. As they walk up the stairs, Chiaki talks about his collection, catching a cutie, and posting a video online, causing Sawa to continue to panic. When they get inside, Sawa warns Fujimiya that Chiaki and Takafumi are scumbags that think of women as collectibles. When she sees the fish head altar in the living room, she freaks out and tries to leave, thinking they are in a cult. However, before she can leave, Yosuke returns, and makes things worse with his creepy smile. Despite this, Fujimiya ends up explaining that it's not a cult, and Yosuke is just a YouTuber. Sawa finds it strange that Fujimiya is hanging out here, but quickly realizes that she has feelings for Takafumi. So she decides to test if Takafumi also has feelings, showing him pictures of the two of them to see his reaction. However, Takafumi becomes more fixated on the random men in the background. Sawa becomes interested to know what Fujimiya was like in elementary school, and Takafumi tells her she looked very similar to her brother Chiaki. Sawa wonders how Chiaki is doing, not recognizing that the shady guy was Chiaki all along. Yosuke decides to just show Sawa what Fujimiya was like back in elementary school, but is immediately stopped by Takafumi. Realizing he revealed his magic, he immediately goes to erase their memories, but gets restrained by Takafumi, while Fujimiya helps the other two escape. After this, Fujimiya scolds Yosuke for always resorting to erasing memories, and this reminds him of a similar situation with the elf at the hot spring. When the two arrive at the hot spring, Yosuke is surprised to see the sign in Japanese. The elf notes that the hot spring's founder also came from another world, but has since passed away. The owner of the inn comes out, explaining that the inn was created using the power of God, but Yosuke just organizes his inventory, treating it as game dialogue that he can't skip, much to Takafumi and Fujimiya's dismay. They end up getting a room at the inn, and Yosuke is annoyed when he finds out he has to share a room with the elf. The owner's daughter offers to prepare him a room of his own, but the elf scares her away. The elf is excited seeing their room, but Yosuke drags his futon away to another room. The elf is shocked at the tiny room, and disappointed she'll be resting alone, but Yosuke suddenly returns and starts giving her a foot massage against her will, thanking her for helping him return from being a dragon. The elf can't handle the massage, but he drags her back, and continues on. However, this gets interrupted when Alicia, Edgar and Raiga are revealed to be eavesdropping. Alicia apologizes to the elf, but ends up flattering her when she thinks that they are a couple, and the elf even shows off her ring. Yosuke asks them what they were doing here, and they tell him that they were training up in the mountains. Alicia thanks him once again for the Wand of Salvation, and the elf is shocked to see the legendary magic weapon. 
Raiga tells Yosuke that they were training a new skill and is keen to see it, so he plays Alicia's memory and sees their new skills in action. However, this also reveals a fancy sheath being used as a laundry rack, and upon seeing it, the elf asks where the group found it and immediately heads off to look for it. Yosuke explains that the sheath was actually an ancient magic tool and the elves have a goal to collect them. The group suddenly notices something burning and we see that the inn is under attack by a hypno beast. It took control of the owner's daughter and had her open the door. Yosuke tries to use his magic but there are two birds in the sky that are blocking his magic. He ends up struggling without his magic but ends up using some magic charms to fight. He uses a wind charm to fly himself up, attacking with a fire charm, and slowing his fall with an ice charm. There is still one bird left, but it gets blasted out of the sky, as we see the elf using her new weapon from the mountain. Seeing that he isn't looking at her, the elf shoots at him to get his attention, but it leads to another one of their misunderstandings. Fujimiya wonders how the bird sealed his magic, and it turns out they have a terrible breath which causes the spirits to be suppressed. When he tries to use his magic, it still doesn't work because the smell is still lingering. So he heads back to Alicia and the others, but finds her being chased by her friends, who have also been hypnotized. He regroups with her and wonders if she can undo the hypnotization with her wand. He grabs it, thinking it might have a secret function like the elf's sword, and the wand flies up into the sky, bursting with light. Two barriers are created, and Alicia becomes flustered with Yosuke on top of her. After she calms down, she uses her magic, sinking her mind with the three of them and is able to free them from the beast's control. The Hypno Beast suddenly attacks her, but she dodges and sends it flying using one of Raiga's techniques. Yosuke reveals that the wand boosted her strength and when she sinked her mind to free the others, she gained their techniques. The beast gets back up and makes a run for it, summoning a bunch of monster hounds in the process, but Yosuke's magic finally returns as he restrains them all, summoning water serpents and defeating all of the dogs. Water pours down thanks to his spell, and the rest of the fire is put out. Afterward, Yosuke puts up a barrier around the now exposed bathing area, which actually pleases the owner because they now can have a lovely mountain view. Everything turns out well, but Fujimiya wonders how this story was related to getting scolded for erasing memories. Yosuke says that after the battle, he had another bath in the hot spring, and he was joined by Alicia. As she gets closer, her skirt gets caught, and she ends up revealing herself, causing him to immediately erase his own memory. Yosuke acts cool, having forgot what he just saw, and Alicia thinks he must have no interest in a little girl like her, but is then shocked to find out that she is actually slightly older than him. Alicia is devastated, but thinks her birthday could be wrong, because she has no memories of before she was nine. Using Yosuke's memory magic, we see that she was found after a goblin attack, she had no memories, and was saved by the guards. She was adopted into the village where Raiga and Edgar lived, and she treasures every memory that they've made. Hearing this, Yosuke feels guilty and admits that he has erased her memories twice. He reveals that he was the one who stopped the goblin invasion, and the time they went through the back door of the dungeon, Alicia realizes that he should have the hero title, remembering how he fixed the barrier in the sealed city, but Yosuke tells her that he was the one that destroyed it in the first place. He explains that he is from another world, and hoped that if he attacked the strongest barrier with his strongest attack, he might create a distortion in space-time to let him go back. Alicia forgives him but tells him not to erase any more memories, saying she doesn't want to forget him. Yosuke concedes, and ends up promising not to erase any memories about her, but Alicia suddenly remembers how he erased his memory after seeing her earlier. Yosuke demands to know what happened, not wanting to break his promise. Although embarrassed, Alicia prepares to recreate the site, but they suddenly get sniped at, and Yosuke is shocked his barrier was broken. There are more shots fired, and Yosuke makes a run for it, while Alicia is left behind. One month later, Yosuke takes on a quest to slay a singing monster. It sings a song about the three shrines and trials of the land. Yosuke uses his magic and charges at the beast, but he ends up crashing when he realizes the monster was actually just Mabel. He wonders what she is doing out in the woods, worried she might get attacked by monsters, but Mabel shows off her cloak, which lets her disguise herself as a monster. He starts petting her, but she gets embarrassed. He wonders why she isn't in the capital working as a knight, since he doesn't know she got fired. Mabel pretends that she quit her job to be more free, 
and explains that she lives in the forest and put up a scary ice sculpture to scare off anyone that approaches so she can live here forever. Realizing she is the singing monster, Yosuke prepares to fight her. Mabel is terrified and immediately agrees to leave. She takes down the ice statue and she wonders what she is going to do. Yosuke reminds her that she'll be fine because she can just sell the ring he gave her, but she insists on keeping it. Yosuke suggests she could make money as a bard, but Mabel gets embarrassed and says she is used to singing alone. Yosuke thinks that since she is cute and can sing, she would have easily become rich as an idol in Japan. Mabel fantasizes about getting rich, but Yosuke thinks about how he can get back to his own world. Hoping to cheer him up, Mabel offers to sing a song from his homeland. Takafumi wonders what song he chose, but it ends up just being the background music from the Sonic the Hedgehog game. He ends up passing out on Mabel's lap, and she keeps singing for him, but there are some knights that plan to ambush them. However, the elf appears, taking the men out, and she glares toward Yosuke on Mabel's lap. Yosuke thinks she is nice for saving them, but Takafumi and Fujimiya can clearly see she is furious. Takafumi asks his uncle about his love for video game music, and his uncle decides to put some on. But when he reads the manual, he finds out he has been mispronouncing the hero's name for the last decade, and he has a meltdown. When Yosuke tries to record a YouTube video as the elf, he can't maintain the appearance and is still down about his mistake. Fujimiya thinks it's not a big deal getting the name wrong, but he argues that names are important, mentioning the time when the elf told him her real name. The two are shocked to hear this and insist on seeing the memory. The morning after he met Mabel, the elf confronts him about what he has been up to with Mabel and Alicia. She doesn't like that he keeps calling them by their names when she has known him longer, but he says that she never revealed her name to him. They get into an argument because she knows that he hasn't told her his real name either, so he suddenly reveals his actual name as Yosuke, making the elf flustered. He asks her for her name, but it turns out to be super long and impossible to remember. Yosuke decides to give her a nickname, calling her Sui. The elf thinks it's disrespectful and her people would never allow it. But Yosuke wonders if she likes it personally, explaining that Sui means green, just like the color of her eyes, calling them beautiful like jewels. She becomes flustered, and when he calls her Sui, she tells him to only call her that in private. She promises to keep his name secret because she wants to be the only one that uses it. Mabel joins them, and she wonders what they were doing. Yosuke mentions that he is there to explore the ruins, and Mabel recognizes it as one of the three shrines of the land. In Mabel's song, the trial of the shrines is meant for a foreign warrior. They suddenly realizes that it would apply to Yosuke. Yosuke approaches the shrine, and he suddenly blows it up. A godly being emerges, and Yosuke prepares to go all out against it, but Takafumi interrupts, and they wonder why he destroyed the shrine. He says that he was brought to the world by a great power, so he thought that by defeating the power of the shrine, he would get closer to returning back home. Fujimiya thinks that there should have been three shrines, but it turns out he already destroyed the other two in his previous adventures. The memory continues, as he uses his full power to blast the monster, but it instantly regenerates, and the elf notes that it's a mass of holy magic with no physical body, so regular attacks won't work. Monsters begin to rise from the ground. The elf attacks with her sword, and Mabel uses her ice against the monsters, but they keep on reviving. Yosuke decides to burn them to ash, but as he approaches, he is suddenly mind-controlled, and he unleashes his flames against the two girls. The elf jumps to save Mabel, but they end up being protected by the god-freezing sword. They wonder how they should fight Yosuke, but Raiga suddenly appears and sends Yosuke flying. Raiga thinks he took out an orc, and Alicia starts healing the other two. They are there to find the singing monster, but the elf recognizes them, and Raiga realizes it was Yosuke that he punched. The elf tells them they are up against a godly being, and that Yosuke is being mind-controlled. Alicia uses the power of her wand to bring Yosuke back to his senses. She finds herself in Yosuke's memory, but gets rejected, describing his childhood as dark and lonely, with nothing but a box in front of him. They all feel sorry for him, but those were his happiest memories. Yosuke regains control, using his magic to slap himself, waking himself up. He throws up the flame of the blaze dragon, destroying the container, and the dragon begins to revive and absorb the holy monster's power. 
Since Yosuke couldn't fight something without a physical body, he planned for the dragon to absorb the monster, which he would then defeat. But Alicia wonders how he will defeat it, now that the dragon has gained the regeneration and mind control powers of the holy monster. Yosuke didn't think that far, and realizes that he may have made a mistake. Yosuke suggests using Mabel's god-freezing sword, but Mabel is completely terrified, so it's not going to work. They think they are doomed, but the elf has a plan. She says that they just need to do more damage than it can heal, and mentions that her sword has the ability to absorb and amplify energy. If Yosuke provides his energy, they should have enough to defeat the dragon. Alicia worries about the mind controlling, but the elf reveals the jewel on her forehead protects her from any mental attacks. Alicia approaches Yosuke, and they talk about their last encounter at the hot spring. Yosuke wants to know about the memory that he erased, but Alicia is too embarrassed to tell him. The dragon starts to move, so the elf awkwardly asks Yosuke to carry her to help her fly. Yosuke is not too keen, so he ends up using his chain to carry her. With this, Mabel thinks she won't be needed for the fight, but as she tries to leave, the dragon appears to be targeting her because the Blaze Dragon has a natural grudge against the Ice Clan. Yosuke suggests that she can be the bait to distract the dragon, and she has no choice but to agree. As she charges at the dragon, it throws a boulder at her, but Alicia saves her using one of Edgar's sword skills. As the others distract the dragon, Yosuke can tell that the elf is worried, but she remembers his words from the past about never giving up, so they prepare to face the dragon. Takafumi pauses the memory, as he is in tears that he will finally get to witness a true fantasy battle, something he has been waiting to see since meeting his uncle. Yosuke makes some coffee, and Takafumi prepares some snacks, ready to finally see a battle. The memory continues, as they approach the dragon. It blasts them with its breath, but Yosuke shields them from the attack. He transfers his magic to the elf, and she charges at the dragon. Mabel provides support using her eyes to bind the dragon, and Yosuke unleashes his lightning to charge up the elf's sword. She creates an enormous blade of energy, slashing down onto the dragon and defeating it. The elf faints and starts to fall, but Yosuke rushes to her and catches her. She tries to confess her feelings to him, but he can't hear her. He carries her as they descend, but he smells a burnt smell on her and starts to sniff her, causing her to struggle, and they end up crashing down. Yosuke collects the flame of the holy blaze dragon, and the elf warns him about keeping it. The others come rushing over, and Mabel asks to be praised for her efforts. Yosuke thanks them all for their help, saying he would have struggled without them. He especially praises Mabel, and it seems she wants to be carried, just like how he carried the elf. Yosuke thinks they just want to fly, so he grabs Alicia and jumps up into the sky. She flails around, and when they land, Raiga and Edgar also want to turn. The elf appears to be furious at Mabel, but Yosuke thanks her for singing to him, giving her another ring. The elf is about to lose it, but Alicia suddenly wonders why Mabel calls him Wolfkinblood, when she thinks his name is Kuroki. Yosuke explains that he just made them up, but tells them his real name is Yosuke. The elf is devastated he gave out his real name so easily, and the other two find his fake names to be cooler, which makes him happy. The elf gets mad at Yosuke, causing him to drop the dragon's flame. She wonders what he plans on doing with it, and he reveals that when they slayed the dragon, there was a warp in the space-time. He plans to combine the flame with other entities, in hopes that it will create a big enough portal for him to get home, but the elf suddenly tries to destroy it. She powers up her sword, and there is a struggle, but Fujimiya can tell that she just didn't want him to leave. She wonders if he ended up making the flame stronger to create the portal home, but Takafumi stops her, not wanting to ruin the story. They start getting hungry, so Yosuke decides to treat them to ramen again. They enjoy a delicious meal, and as they walk home, Takafumi thinks about how much his life has changed in just a year. But that's where this video ends. Remember to subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell, so you don't miss any videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.